thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Why I Love Flagler County, your local podcast spotlighting local businesses and local residents on why they like being in Flagler County. Today, I'm super excited to have my guest with me, Yannette, today. Thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Well, this is actually a funny story of how she found out about me. It's usually the other way around, but she reached out to me via Facebook. She's seen a few of my posts and she's like, you know, I do these things on the side. She has a business and a nonprofit and she's like, "Um, maybe we could do the podcast. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love these. I was going on her profile. I'm like, this is right up my alley. I would love to talk (laughs) about this. So I'm super excited to learn more about you were telling me a little bit about your non- one of your nonprofits, and I was looking a little bit about your business, so I'm just super excited to dive in. So um, just to get us started, why don't you tell just a little bit on your journey of coming here to Flag- Flagler, Palm Coast, all that good stuff. All right, so I moved to Flagler County, to Palm Coast, in 1993. I was, I was 14. I was in seventh grade. I went to Buddy Taylor. I lived in New York. I was from Queens, New York. And I had an uncle and cousins who lived down here. We would come during the summers to visit. And it was like a jungle. It was it was dark. There were no street lights. It was just, but it was fun. Um, and then my mom was like, do you guys want to move to Palm Coast? And I was like, yeah, the beach, <laughs> they have a pool. Why not? You know, so we moved. I was in seventh grade. I started at um, Buddy Taylor. And then I went to uh, Catholic school in St. Augustine from eighth to 12th grade. Um, I, so I've seen a lot. Like I said, there were no street lights. They were, everything was stop signs. Yeah. We had a Walmart and a Kmart and that was, that was it. And a Winn-Dixie and a Publix. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I, I had a gentleman on recently who has been around since the like early 2000s. And he's like, he, he's like, I count the growth in Palm Coast and Flagler based off how many new Publixes have opened. Um, so he's like, when he moved, there was only one and now we're up to like four or five. And I was like, you know, that would make sense. I can see where that as a measuring indicator would come in. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We've grown. We're getting the BJs. Oh yeah, we are getting <laughs> BJs. Are yeah, we're getting BJs. I think a gentleman mentioned today that we're getting a Miller's Ale House. I didn't even know. I didn't even know yes. about that. <laughs> yeah one of my faves I, I will be there <laughs> you will be there I and I also talked to another girl and she was like um she's like I feel like we finally made it in Palm Coast when they opened the Chipotle and I was like yeah <laughs> yes I get that so no I'm sure you, <laughs> right so I'm sure you've just completely seen as you mentioned the Palm Coast just completely transform oh it did I moved away for five years to Tampa mm-hmm. and so that was from 99 to um, 2005. Yeah. And we came back because we want our kids. When we had kids, we wanted our kids to go to school here. And coming back, I was like, oh, wow, it's, it's busier. You know, not Tampa busy. But then oh, to wow. watch from 2005 to now, you know, 2024, I'm like, oh, wow, it's it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> but it's awesome. It's, it's good. It's good. It's still small. Still small enough. It's small but enough. It's way Definitely. different. Yeah, yeah, like I think I was telling you, like I feel like we still have a few more years under our belt before it really gets crazy. Because I think I've talked to a few people; they lived like in St. Augustine or Jacksonville, and they they had to drive up and down, right? Um, right. And, like Daytona, but like they never really stopped in Palm Coast. They kind of just drove past it, so like they didn't know Palm Coast existed. I'm like I think people are still at that phase. They see the sign and they're like, "All right, let's keep going." So I think we have a little bit of a secret at least for a few more years. <laughs> so I think so when we go on vacation and people are like where you're from I'm like you know right outside of Daytona south of St. Augustine nestled in the middle. <laughs> Perfectly in <laughs> the middle. I don't know they have no idea. Yeah. I just say Daytona it just keeps it easier. <laughs> My husband does that. he's like Daytona and I'm like yeah but it's kind of like right outside. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit north. <laughs> also share about your business because you're an esthetician is what I remember right yes ma'am and I always find it a good sign that an esthetician tells me they're an esthetician and I couldn't guess their age like when you said that you moved here in the 90s I'm like oh when she was born I imagine or or so much (laughs) yeah (laughs) I was like oh okay (laughs) no no I was I was a whole teenager then (laughs) no I actually have two kids 23 and 16 so (laughs) 
Thank you. Well, why don't you try but to thank you. That's a compliment. Me. I appreciate it. And that. I completely mean that. <laughs> um, I would love for you to share a little bit about opening your own business and how that journey has been. It has been, it's been awesome. I mean, there's waves, you know, it's a lot, you know, you don't think it, I think on the back end, um, I opened on my own. So I graduated from esthetician school in 2015. Mm -hmm. I also had my nail license from way back when, when I was in high school, one summer board in Palm Coast, I went to nail school. I don't know why there was nothing else to do. So I've had my license since I was 16. So I didn't go right into aesthetics. I started, um, back with nails and then I went slowly into aesthetics and I went to work somewhere else and I was there for about four years um, and COVID hit and when COVID happened you know the world shut down and um, my husband was just like you should go out on your own and you should do you know you should do your own thing and I was like I don't don't really know you know and then I was just like you know I really had fallen in love with doing facials and chemical peels and all that um, and I was just like, okay, all right. And you know how they say the little nudge in the, you know, the little nudge that they give you, you know, his was like a full on push in the back, <laughs> falling over the edge. So, but he's, he's a barber and he, so he works okay. for himself. So he, yeah. he knows. So I opened here, um, in the coastal center, September 1st, 2000, 2020. Right. You know, still kind of just getting out of COVID, but we were allowed to open back up and just go by appointments, which I still just, you know, generally go by appointments. Um, And it has been a ride. It has been I've learned a lot. There's a lot on the back end. You know, it's different when you're just doing the facial and, you know, rebooking or suggesting products. You know, when you're your own business owner, there's the books, there's the inventory, there's you're the cleaner, you're the you do the linens. (laughs) It's a full circle. So it's mm-hmm. it's really, um, it's rewarding. Mm-hmm. It is. Rewarding. And it's still learning. I learn, I learn every day, whether it's the business end or just listening to different podcasts or keeping up with the trends, you right. know, TikTok stuff that everybody's oh. watching. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They're, they're always changing. It's every two minutes. There's something new and you're like, oh my gosh, I just finished the last trend. What do you mean? There's a new one already. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> Close a skincare magazine. I'm like, oh, there's another one in the mail. Oh, there's that's not what it said last month. <laughs> and it's completely different too. It's not even like the same vein. It's like, oh, we just completely 180. That's all right. Sounds good. Uh, yep. we'll keep going, I guess. Um, I'd be curious to know, just really quick, are there any like anything that you have learned since going through esthetician school and maybe just in the whole process that you're like surprised maybe people didn't know? like a fun fact or something like basic things that maybe people just didn't know about taking care of their skin well well one thing I well not so much taking care of your well a couple different things about taking care of your skin Mm -hmm. but one thing I didn't realize when when people initially hear about facials right they think women Mm. men get facials men take care of their skin oftentimes sometimes better than we do they're they're they are on their regimen, you know, the ones that I've met anyway. Sometimes it takes a little bit when they see that it's working, they follow. Guys, guys actually follow the rules. They they if I lay out something, you know, they're seeing that it's working, they will, they will follow it. So that I didn't think going into school, I was just like, oh, okay. Um, you know, women. Right. You know, w- women and teens, women and teens because of acne and stuff like that. But I actually have a good amount of men clientele that are looking to take care of their skin and, you know, doing their home care routines and stuff like that. So that I didn't going in and coming out and, you know, just going into working in the industry. I did not realize that that would be, you know, a niche, which Mm -hmm. that sounds my part, but it was just not what I first thought of. I talk to, I go to like some networking events and stuff. So now I include like men in my spiel and it's always so oh. funny because they're like, oh, men? And I'm like, yeah, you too. You have skin. Right. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Definitely. That makes total sense. Like my brother is, my younger brother, he's 16. So he had a lot of acne. And so he's really been dedicated to his like skincare routine because he's like, this is terrible. And I'm like, yeah, it is. I know. <laughs> the light turns on right the light turns on and they're like oh this actually this this would work or or the light turns on they're like oh this doesn't you know I don't like the way that this looks and it can change so it's also the transformation too and that's for for 
and, and that's why I enjoy doing what I do because when I get to see the transformation, whether it's teens or men or women suffering from acne or, you know, like hyperpigmentation or just when they see that transformation and they realize that if they put in the work, the reward is there, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, at first, initially when I thought, oh, facials, when I went to aesthetic school, I really went for lashes. I wanted to do lashes. Mm lashes my vision does not support lashes I wear glasses it does not help so I got on the aesthetic at the aesthetic side and I didn't um I was just like oh facials Uh, it's just like upkeep but they're really you know throughout the years it's really transformed into there's definitely rewards and change and it's a journey Mm -hmm. yeah and I think it's really important that you include men in your you know when you talk about it because I think another thing is they don't want to feel like they're alone. No one wants to feel like they're alone in this, especially when something that like maybe society doesn't tell them they're included. So when they hear that they're included, it's like, oh, okay, other other guys are doing, yeah, of course other guys are doing it. Of course you can join in. This is for everyone. It's just your skin. We all have it. (laughs) We all want to take care of ourselves. It's just how human beings are. And, you know, and it's just about taking care of yourself. Just like you said, I was talking to someone the other day and we were talking about the same thing. She was like, yeah, you know, I went into to get my pedicure and there were like a lot of guys in there. I was like, it's self-care. There's nothing wrong with it. I think the stigma of like, oh, guys don't get pedicures. Guys don't. They need to. They need to. They need to. We need no. We need to normalize it further. <laughs> I think it's more important. <laughs> like more of the because I do see that my numbers for guys are are going going up. You know, even if they just come, they consult and they just want to start at home. You know, before they come in, you know, that's totally fine. We can start you with you know, like a sample, some samples, consult, and then they start seeing it and they're like, oh, okay not just guys sometimes it's you know us women too they're just like oh I don't know I, I want to I don't know if this would work for me hey. so consulting and um you know that's a big part of the whole thing and and trust yes definitely and taking it easy and understanding what's going on um I'd love to also segue into if you you do you have two nonprofits or you have your own nonprofit and you work with another one is what I remember Correct. So my husband and I, we have um, a nonprofit from 2017. It's called Move to Improve. Um, Why we initially started it was, I remember when I was in school, we had field day. That's now major myself. So now, you know, I did not, I was not born here. (laughs) Uh, We had field day. And it was like one day a year that we, and I remember my kids had it too, when they were really young, we would go out. Field day. Do they not have field day anymore? No, not, really? not, um, maybe in elementary schools, Okay. but in middle school, we still had it. And it was just that day when you went out and you did all sides of indoors, outdoor sports and all that. And as we had kids, we realized that they don't really play outside. And then Palm Coast, you know, it's still growing, but some streets, you know, neighbors, they don't have kids and stuff like that. So we wanted to put together stuff to get kids moving again. Mm-hmm. So we started um, doing, the goal was initially to raise funds to Mm -hmm. send at-risk youth or an underprivileged adult to a technical school because we're both in trades. Mm -hmm. So we did a couple golf tournaments. um, We've done some other fundraising. um, And then we would do backpack giveaways every year. We realized that there was a real big need for backpacks and school supplies. Mm -hmm. So we, at the beginning of August, the week after school starts back, we do a backpack giveaway every year. It's usually 200 plus kids. We do food, we do games, we do face painting, all that fun stuff. And then the other, um, just starting up and being a part of another nonprofit, it's called I Am Me. And it's for girls of Flagler County. Um, The initial reason we started it with prom coming up being I've been to prom and I know how expensive prom is, hair, shoes, dress, accessories. Um, We wanted to give back to the girls who can't, who are doing great in school or even really trying in school Mm -hmm. and just can't afford going to prom. Mm -hmm. So our 
goal is to give them dresses, shoes, accessories. Um, two girls will get full glam, one from FBC, one from Matanzas. It's just open to every girl in Flagler County. Um, the applications are on our website. We are looking for sponsors and donations as well. So I'm a part of that. So yeah, those are those two. <laughs> That's awesome. And I really love that because, you know, prom is such a special night for a lot of these girls. And yeah. they they shouldn't have to feel like, you know, they can only budget so something so small like they have to reuse something that they don't like or anything like that like everyone deserves that chance to feel really beautiful especially during some like high school is really a very insecure moment in your life usually like that's when judgment is an all-time high stress is at I don't know about all-time high but you know like all of these things it feels like it's at an all-time high let's say that you know it feels like the end of the world um so it's really important that you're able I'm really glad that you're able to help all these kids in all these different areas that we need anyway I think so it's always I'm like oh I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but then the reward again, yes. right? Yeah. Um, and just, I know it's going to help someone, even if it just helps one girl, you know, because it is high school's hard, middle school's hard, school's hard, you know, trying to fit in finances, everything's so expensive nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. you throw in how much ever dresses cost these days, shoes, hair, all of that. So if right. we can, um, it's myself and two other women. They are both great. And they, but we all just have the same vision. We just want to help these girls, you yeah. know, and we're going to be like throughout the year, etiquette classes and all kinds of different stuff. So it's still, we're, we're starting, it started up, you know, mm -hmm. but this is our year. So okay, we're congrats. Going different types of stuff as well. <laughs> awesome. So I'll make sure I have all that information in the description so people can check that out, support them, you know, check out a little bit about what you do as well. And, you know, just click on that a little bit easier. Hopefully that helps people with seeking out and doing some things that are really great. Like uh, I always ask people like, what should you do in the community? And everyone always says they, they love being a part of nonprofits, a part of charities, any way that they can just do some volunteer help. And it's a great way to bond and give back to the community. So, you know, thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. This has been a total blast to me. I love talking to you, but also just learning a lot about all the different aspects that you do to help make people feel better, look better, all of those great things in life. Thank you. You are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. I am so. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. And to everyone listening, thank you guys so much as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Take care.